Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. So today is going to be a makeup tutorial on this look right here. It's certainly one of my favourite eyeshadow looks to do. Um, it's always something I tend to gravitate towards when I go out and things like that. So things have changed since my last video. I used to do red, gold and glittery stuff whereas now I'm a bit more on the dark side now I know how to work with dark eyeshadows. <laughs> But yeah, if you want to see how I created this look, then just please keep watching. As you can see, I have done one eye off camera, just because I want to go in depth as much as I can with this tutorial, because I know a lot of my friends, well, obviously because they're my friends, but a lot of my friends have said that they really like how I do this eyeshadow look and they want to know how to do it, so I thought, why not choose, this is my first video to come back to. So, yeah. I'm going to show you how you do this. I need to stop with the hands. The hands are really annoying because I haven't painted them and they're short as f What are you to do? So a lot of the brushes I'm going to be using today are, sorry I keep looking down here because they're all down here. I've got a few Sigma, I've got a few Morphe that have just come out of like a random set that they've done. But mainly I'm going to be using, all the white brushes are the Morphe X Jaclyn Hill collaboration. But yeah, so the first brush I'm going to be using is this little flat shader brush. I don't use it for eyeshadow, I use it for my cream concealer just under my eye. Uh, back in the day, I think one of my first ever videos was a flat brush to carve up my brows. I personally don't like the rounded ones, I feel like you don't get that much of a sharp edge with them. So just with this flat shader brush, I'm just going to grab, get that hair off at first, I'm just going to grab a little bit of the P. Louise. I've also just put a blob on my Laura Mercier powder. Um, you don't need a lot of this stuff. I find I don't like having a really thick base on just because too much makeup on my face irritates me. So I've just got a little bit on there and then I'm trying to not get my mirror in it. Ah! What's it there? Yeah, so I'm just going to... Oh, wow. This is difficult whilst talking. Ah! So yeah, that's literally all I do. And then with any excess product, I'm just gonna push downwards. Can you even see me? Up close and personal. I'm just gonna push some of that excess product down just so we don't get a buildup of base. And that's still using the same brush. And I'm just literally just lightly dabbing it on like so. Dun, 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 dun. So it's like that. So I'm just gonna grab, this is this is meant to be an eyeshadow brush. I don't know if you can see, is it gonna, is it gonna focus? Oh yes it is. Wow, I'm so professional this time around. Um, yeah, so I use this for cream products as well. This is just to fluff it out over my eyeshadow lid. Eyeshadow lid, that's not a word. I'm just gonna quickly grab some of that product on this brush and then lightly dust it over the top but I'm, I'm literally using like hardly any product because of how thick the um, consistency is. You really don't need a lot. So I'm trying to make sure that I don't get the mirror in the way. Oh, there we go. Wow, we're on to a winner here. So then once I've done that, don't be afraid to use your fingers. I'm normally really anti-finger when it comes to makeup, but when it comes to this eyeshadow base, I do just use my finger to just make sure it's all nice and flat. So you wanna bring it out as well, but you can cover that with foundation like at a later time. But just making sure that it's all blended. And all cute with my little finger. Always make sure you've got little cotton pads. Although I'm trying to find some reusable ones. I did buy some reusable ones off AliExpress and they were absolutely whack. So if you could point me in the direction so I can get rid of these horrible things, save the planet. Yes, yeah, so, okay, hmm. now that we've done that, there's gonna be a number of brushes that I'm gonna use. I think I use one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, possibly eight. I know it seems a bit extreme, but you'll understand as you go along, the more different size brushes you have, the easier it's gonna be for yourself. Because until maybe last year, I used the same brush blend in all my dark shadows with all my light brushes and it just was a hot mess, okay? I just want to quickly show you the palette we're going to be using. This is the Be Perfect and Stacey Marie Carnival XL Pro Palette. 
I have the original and the original is literally the best thing that's ever came into my life so of course I had to get like look how big it is I'll zoom you out but you know just look look at the comparison to my face look at the comparison to my face so out of this palette we are just going to be using mainly this corner here and then the more nicer colours up here as we get into the halo as such. The first brush I'm going to be using is going to be a pencil brush. And I know that seems a bit bizarre because normally I go with a big fluffy brush but not today. So this one, um, again, all the whites are Jaclyn Hill X Morphe. This is their little pencil brush that comes in the set. This is JH36 for reference if you want to buy them singularly, which I think you still can. I bought it as a collection, so I've got all the brushes out of the collection. So in this Be Perfect palette, we're gonna go into a color called Hall, which is a really nice warmy brown color. And we're essentially going to be mapping out this bit here. We're just gonna start from the outside and because it is an eyeshadow base, the eyeshadows are going to stick to the base quite quickly. So it's better to just wiggle in and out and place the shadows. Because you don't want to be swiping and all of that that I used to do. I think we've all been there. But since I've, start, since I've moved over to an eyeshadow base, I feel placing the shadows and then blending them once they're on your eyelid is a lot better. So this is... Is gonna look like the crazy this is gonna look like the crazy part I'm not gonna lie it took me ages to understand how to use a base so don't feel like you can't do makeup if you don't do it right the first time so literally just place them where we want it look at that crazy hot mess so once you've placed it it's gonna be a lot of it's a, it's a process we're gonna be doing a lot of building and layers but not cakey layers because well, I don't want a cakey layer and I'm sure you don't either. I'm then going to take my JH36, which is a small tapered brush. And then I'm just going to slightly blend these out. I also found as well, the way you hold a brush can also determine how well your eyeshadow goes. I find the closer I hold it to the end, the more light my hand is because you're not putting so much tension on the brush. Um, you get a softer, softer blend. Also, just another quick tip as well, you don't want to be blending upwards because we want to keep it as close to the uh, cre crease line, crease as possible. So it's better to come up from an angle and blend downwards because we're going to be covering it with concealer and darker colours down in this bit anyway. So just make sure it's all blended, like so. Please, I don't know if you can you can see, but I can, but ignore that bit because it is, it is eczema. It's not because I haven't blended it out right. So again, going back with this pencil brush, this is the um, JH38. I feel like I said 36 the first time, but the one I just used was a 36. So with our darkest colour, which is Intuition, which is a really, really deep brown, we're then going to do the exact same process by doing it in the crease and going all the way round. Because it's a halo eye, whatever we do to the outer, outer corner, we have to do to the inner corner. So if you just follow it all the way round... all about symmetry this eye look as well which is not my strong point <laughs> so once we've done that I'm then going to go into my Sigma tapered brush which is the E40 and we're just gonna again blend those two colors together so just keep blending it also just a side note I have no product on this on this brush so it's I mean it's clean so if you just keep keep wiggling it in like so. We're then going to grab that same pencil brush that we used and still dipping into that intuition colour and we're just going to pack it on the outer corner. We're just going to pack it on the outer corner 
and then ever so slightly on the inner corner as well. The good thing about using a pencil brush is that you can really get into the corner. So once we've packed that colour on in either side of the corners, we're then going to, this is just a Morphe um, brush so it hasn't actually got a number on it because it was just bought in like a gimmick set. What I like to do is I like to stamp the product again like how we do with our shadows just because you do get more control over where you're placing your products. So what I like to do is just bring the mirror that you're using really like as far as you can down so then your eyelid is flat. I'm going to go slightly above the crease because when we look up we want to be able to see that you've got a halo eye. Place it ever so slightly. Like so. You see? It's just a very, very rough outline because you're going to be able to um, tidy it up when you put your eyeshadows on. Placing it down the centre of your eyelid. Like so. Sorry, I had to get the mirror in shot then. So once that's all done, we're then going to place the eyeshadows down. We're then going to get a JH42 and we're going to go into the colour Orchid and like I'm really pressing down so we're picking up as much product as we can and then again just placing it ever so slightly where you've put all of that um, eyeshadow base. And it's good with the round ones as well when you're trying to get that curve when you place it you don't have to mess around with having to tidy it up as much so just placing it all down and then i'll go in with my finger as well and really drag it down the center so you get more of a color payoff and then with the edges just ever so slightly blend in the edges so then we don't get that harsh line. That edge really um, circular. So once we've done that, to really give it more of a pop, I'm then going to go into the shade Pink Me. So this one is Orchid and then this one in the pan looks white but it's got pink reflectance in it. So we're just going to pop that right in the middle near the lash line so then it gives it more of a vibrant look. So then once we've done that we're then going to get the JH40 which is a really small pointed fluffy brush and then going back into the colour haul and then really making sure that the edges are all buffed together and because this is a lighter colour than Intuition that we put on the outside it's going to give it more of a gradient feel. So, like so, and then making sure that all the edges are blended out. Okay, so I've just got a pair of eyelashes, and um, these are just ones I found in my drawer. My favourite eye gl eyelash glue is the Isla uh, lash glue that you can get when you buy like a pair of eyelashes. I feel like that's, I've never really had any problems with them before. So now that the glue is still a little bit wet, what I will do, and I th this is something that I found has really worked for me to keep my eyelashes on as long as possible, is I will literally just stamp where I want the glue. So as you can see, I've just put a lash, a lot like a stamp of glue on my eyelid, and then I'll just try and dry it as much as I can. So then I'll then just place So now we're going to move on to base, which is my favourite part. It's now my favourite part of doing makeup. I just think you could literally do anything with a good base. Do you see where I'm going here? Do you see where I'm going? Okay, so I don't have that much fake tan on, so I am going to use a lighter foundation. Normally, if I've got fake tan on, I will use the Too Faced Born This Way. Uh, this is being like a ride or die, I think this is like my third or fourth bottle now. Um, so just for reference, when I do wear fake tan, I'm in the shade Sand. But for today, 
we're going to use the Laura Mercier Tinted Moisturiser in the shade 2W3 Natural. Um, although this is a tinted moisturiser, it's got the coverage of a foundation. I bloody love this. Before I put foundation on, I'm just going to put the MAC Strobe Cream on. I really, really like a glowy base. I think because I'm quite dry, if I don't really hydrate my base, I can come across a bit scaly and a bit ashy. So, I'm just going to put this all over. So now that we've got the strobe cream on, I'm then going to move on to our tinted moisturiser. So I'm just going to take this on a big kabuki brush. This again is from the Jaclyn Hill collection. This is the JH03 and I think it's the only brush that is in the collection. But when I watched her video, she said that this is, they, they have a brush like this that isn't part of the collection on the Morphe website. So if they don't sell it as a single or they don't stock it anymore. There is a brush literally identical to this on the Morphe website. Now that the foundation is done, I'm now going to put all of my creams and liquids down. Like I said, I am quite dry, so I do like to choose a cream product over a powder, just because I feel like when I put powder on my skin, it literally, oh God, it's just, it's, it's just a hot mess. But obviously we need powder to set certain areas and that's fine. So now I'm going to put concealer on. Again, oldie but a goodie. This is the Revolution Conceal and Define in the shade C5. It's just cheap and cheerful, you know? So I'm just gonna highlight in the areas that I want to bring forward. This is just a brush from the same Morphe set. I'll try and link the, I'm trying to think when I, where I bought it or when I bought it. I'll see if I can find the kit and if I can find the kit then I'll link it below. But yeah, I literally, again, just like patting it instead of moving the product about. I also feel if you pat a, uh, liquid into the skin it looks more natural personally there we go so that is my concealer done now I'm going to use the Hoola uh, quickie contour stick from Benefit so I'm just going to like so so then I'm just going to take this brush, the JHOH, which is just like a little small brush, and again, just pushing the product into my face and blending it out as much as I can. And again, with the other side. I'm just going to run a little bit down my nose as well. Then I'm kind of trying to change it up with my forehead. Normally I would use the hula stick on my forehead, but I think it's a bit too harsh sometimes, especially ever since Kim Kardashian did that video saying she gets someone to spray tan her scalp. It's all I see now. So now I switch over to, I use a little bit of powder just to go around my head so it all kind of like comes together. But it's all I see now. Every time that I do a middle part in, I just see this bald scalp and it's becoming a bit of a problem to be honest. I think I need to start getting a spray tan on my forehead, but that's a story for another day. So now that we've got concealer, we've got a little bit of bronze, like a liquid cream contour bronzer kind of situation. I'm now going to go in with the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter. I like to put this um, as a base for my highlight. It's such a pretty product as well. I was really hesitant to buy this because it's so effing expensive. But I can tell you now, it's so worth it. I like to use my finger with this one as well. Again, pushing the product into the skin. 
And if I've got a little bit ex excess, I'll just put it like down my chin and down the middle of my face. Oh. Right, so now that we've done that, we're then going to move on to powders. So I'm just going to use this Makeup Forever Pro Fusion Bronzer in 25i. And then I'm just going to get this brush JH02 and then kind of like swirl it. These hairs keep trying to get in my eye and it's doing my head in. And then just like ever so slightly like on my forehead. Like so. And then just like run it down my nose. Like so. And then just to finish off our base and then we'll go back onto the lower lash line. I'm going to use this uh, Doll Beauty Duo and I like to mix the two together but, and I'm just going to use the Sigma High Cheekbone Highlighter FA3 and then and then just like dip it in and then tap it and then I like to kind of almost I don't really know how to explain it I almost kind of like flick it off my cheekbone so then it doesn't stick the places you don't want it to stick like so and then Like that. Okay, so now that all of our base is done, I think I haven't forgotten any steps because I did this last time. Oh my god, I forgot fing blush. So I'm just gonna quickly take this JH04, which is like a tapered brush, and then ever so slightly just like flick it off my cheek. Now that we've done everything on our face. We're then going to move back onto the lower lash line. So again, going back in with our little pencil brush. Where is my mirror? Here we go. So with this little pencil brush, we're going to go into the colour haul. And then do it in. And you'll see why I haven't set my concealer in a minute because, well, you'll just see. So then... So after the colour haul, which is the lightest colour we're going to be using, we're then going to go back into Intuition, which is the darker colour, and just doing it really, really closely. So using those two colours does mimic what we've done to the top. So we've used um, haul in the crease and then we used Intuition to deepen it up. So that's what we've done on the lower lash line. Normally at this stage, if I realize that my skin does need a lot more powder that was where that will be when I go in with my translucent powder so because I'm under these really really hot lights I'm profusely sweating at this stage if I'm like right okay do I need a little bit more coverage do I need um powder in certain areas this is when I'll come in with my Laura Mercier powder so I don't because I don't want my makeup to slide I'm just going to do it down the center of my face because that's only really where I get sweaty, if I'm being honest. But if I'm going for a night out, I'll definitely do this. And I always make sure I do it last, so it lasts longer. Now that we've put powder down, we're then gonna put mascara on our lower lash lines. I like quite a heavy uh, lower lash line, so this is optional, but I will literally just put loads of mascara on my lower lash lines. Finally, we're gonna move on to lips. Because we've got quite a heavy eye, I tend to go quite natural with my lips anyway. I don't really wear like reds and dark colors. I'm very much a nude girl. So I'm just gonna quickly get the NYX Professional Makeup Lip Liner in the shade London. So now that I've done my lips, I'm then going to put on some gloss. This is the NYX Butter Gloss in Creme Brulee. I never thought I'd be wearing a pink lip gloss and it's all I seem to be wearing at the minute. So, I love that. Now to set, I'm going to use the Morphe Continuous Setting Mist. This is one of my favourites at the minute, just because one for price point, it's literally like £15. And I love the spray, it's like an aerosol spray, so I find with other setting sprays that you kind of, it 
kind of flicks at you and you get all the white dots and stuff but this is why I like it so it's just so light and it doesn't disturb any of my makeup or anything so yes I'm just gonna get rid of this really ugly clip out of my hair and I'll be back so this is the finished look. I hope you enjoyed watching today's tutorial. It feels, good. it feels good to be back on YouTube. This feels more professional and more how I wanted it to start at the very beginning. I've got a lot of ideas, so you're gonna wanna subscribe and see what I've been doing. Uh, I hope to see you again soon and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.